So, you know, it's, it's now been a little over four months since we began this campaign. And everywhere we've been, whether it's Oakland or Cleveland, Atlanta or Austin, we've been getting these inspiring, uh, humbling crowds. Thousands of people, 20,000 people in Austin, 20,000 people in Atlanta, 12,000 people in Oakland. For a lot of people who are coming out, it's the first time they've ever attended a political event in their lifetimes. And, and you know, I would love to take all the credit myself. I, I, I would love to say it's just because I'm so fabulous <laughs> that everybody's turning out. But I know that's not the reason they're coming out. The reason they're coming out is because there's something in the wind out there. There's something stirring. There's a hunger in this country right here and right now, a longing for something new that we haven't seen in years. People are hungry to turn the page and write a new chapter in American history. And whenever I stop to think about it, I'm reminded of what got me into public service in the first place, because oftentimes I see young people in the audience and I say to myself, I, I remember when. I'm an old man now. But I remember what it was like when I was first uh, realizing that I had to get involved, that I had a role to play in making a better America. The year after college, I decided to move to Chicago because I'd been inspired by the Chicago in the house. Yeah, I had been inspired by the civil rights movement, the, the image of, of young people, straight back, clear-eyed, people who had decided that they were going to lay their lives on the line. They were going to march. They were going to sit on behalf of a more just, more free America. But I'd been too young to participate, so I looked for some other outlet for that idealism. And this was at a time when factories were closing all across the Midwest. Tens of thousands of people were being laid off. They were boarding up homes and businesses all across the region. And on the south side of Chicago, where neighborhoods were struggling to rebuild after the closing of these steel plants, a group of churches had come together and decided that they could make a difference. And they got their little money together, and it was such a little money that all they could afford to hire was me. <laughs> and the salary was 12000 a year, uh, plus enough money to buy an old beat-up car. And I drove to Chicago, didn't know a soul out there. And I took the job, and I became a community organizer. And, and we went to work setting up job training programs for the unemployed and after-school programs for youth and bringing city services to neighborhoods that have been neglected. And block by block, we turned those neighborhoods around. And it was the best education I ever had because I learned in those neighborhoods that when ordinary people come together, they can achieve extraordinary things. So later, when I finished law school, I turned down the corporate job offers and I came back to Chicago to continue the work I started on. I organized a voter registration drive and signed up 150,000 new voters to help Bill Clinton get elected in 1992. I joined a civil rights practice to make sure that women and minorities were getting a fair shake on the job. I started teaching constitutional law because unlike some occupants of the White House, I actually believe in the Constitution. <laughs> 